Coming up to 740 on CKNW and the John McComb Show, and indeed, our segment this morning with Bowton Law is about businesses being sued. If you're a business owner, what the heck do you do next? Uh, Bowton Law is CKNW's on-air legal analyst for 2015, and as always, our discussion does not constitute legal advice. Joining me in the studio this morning is uh, Greg Rafter. He's a civil litigator with... uh, Bowton Law. Nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So if I'm a business owner, I don't know, a small, medium-sized business, and uh, I'm being sued, generally speaking, what am I being sued for? Well, that, I don't think you can say generally, John. It's, uh, it depends a lot on the nature of your business. Each, each area of business that you're in uh, will attract a certain type of claim. Mm-hmm. For example, a bakery uh, likely isn't going to be involved in a cargo claim but an airline company or a trucking company is going to have lots of cargo claims. Right. There are some some things are common to uh, lots of different businesses, and things like uh, employment matters. Mm-hmm. Um, your uh, all types of businesses hire and fire people all the time, and if you dismiss someone the wrong way, then you know you're opening yourself up to a claim. Slip and fall on your premises; those kinds of things traverse all kinds of businesses. Yeah, it's almost, it sounds like you, it's impossible to completely insulate and cover no. yourself in all those instances. You no, know, I, I tell my clients that all the time. You can run the tightest ship that uh, you can, uh, do everything by the book, but there's no way to completely insulate yourself from claims. And it's an unfortunate part of, uh, of, the, of the legal business, I guess, is that you have to deal with those frivolous claims. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that's one of the things that people... Uh, tend not to do. They see they'll get a notice of civil claim that has some outrageous claim that's made in it, and their their temptation is to throw the thing in the garbage. And frankly, that's the wrong thing. Not to a, do. not a good idea. No, you have to. You actually have to deal with that. Yes, yes. And is it always about money? No, a lot of the times it's uh, people will get involved in claims uh, because of the principle of the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but generally, as the as the matter progresses and they understand the costs and the hassle of having to deal with the process, uh, the principle of the thing often fades away, and mm-hmm. we look for a more practical solution. Is that why uh, we hear um, often that uh, cases are settled? Before they go to court, sometimes the day before, the day of court, the lawyers will get together and there will be a, an agreement reached. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we always try, or at least I certainly try and encourage my clients to settle if, it, if there's a reasonable way to do it. Mm-hmm. It's because the process is, uh, can be uh, somewhat uncertain, and it certainly can be time-consuming and expensive yes. and distracting from what you really want to do, which is run your business. And especially in, in civil litigation, time is is a real factor. Oh, very much so, very much so. And you know, if or if you wanted to take a matter to trial, uh, the length of the trial generally dictates uh, how long it's going to take to get a trial scheduled. Uh, so, and that depends on the number of witnesses you have and the the whatever technical areas might be involved. If there's experts going to be involved, mm-hmm. and the the longer the trial, the longer it's going to take to get it to get the matter heard. You uh, touched on this, but when uh, a company receives notice that it's being sued, rather than tossing it in the garbage can, what what should they do next? What's the what are the first steps here? Well, as self serving as it may sound, you should get in touch with counsel right away. Uh, if you don't know a lawyer, you probably know someone that does know a lawyer. If you if that doesn't work, you can there are services you can search online, mm-hmm. uh, but there are services in particular through the Canadian Bar Association where you can get referrals that way. But the best thing is to get in to see a lawyer. the The clock is ticking. Once you're served with a notice of civil claim, you have 21 days to file a response. So you need to get in to talk to counsel who can get the lay of the land, get your side of the story, and um, determine what needs to be done to protect your interests. Is there ever uh, a situation where it makes sense to represent yourself? It can be. I mean, uh, there are people that do it for all degrees of complexity, and they do it for a variety of different reasons. Uh, It's not always a good idea because there are certain procedural rules that need to be followed, and the law can be complex, too, depending on what area we're talking about. But 
Uh, for smaller claims, there are processes available. The provincial court has a small claims division where claims up to $25,000 can be heard there. Most people represent themselves. The mm-hmm. staff at the registry is helpful in helping fill out the forms and so on. Uh, in the Supreme Court, we have uh, a change in our rules recently brought in uh, what they call fast track uh, procedures for claims under $100,000, which helps speed things up there. You wouldn't likely represent yourself in, in Supreme Court, but it's uh, I've seen it done. Uh, the legal proceedings, as you say, can be uh, complicated and, and, uh, and time-consuming. Um, what are some of the things that you have to go through? You have to uh, obviously line up your witnesses, if there are going to be any, uh, all the documentation, uh, arguments, all of that kind of stuff. Well, af- after you speak to your lawyer, the, the first thing he's going to ask you to do is to collect all the documents. And uh, in in the olden days, that's what it was. When mm-hmm. I first started practicing, you ask your client to bring in the documents. They go open up a file cabinet and show up with a box of paper. Uh, it's not like that very much at all anymore. Although there still are paper documents, uh, a lot of information is stored electronically now. And uh, email traffic, text messages, and uh, the locations of all of that information is a lot different than just a plain old filing cabinet. Mm-hmm. We're talking about looking for information on cell phones, on servers, uh, on uh, thumb drives, those kinds of things. Far, far more complicated and complex than it used to be. It, it can be. And in, in more complicated litigation where there are, is lots of electronically stored information, there's now services that are available to assist in sorting all of that out because it's you met, anyone who's sent email strings to a half a dozen different people knows how many copies of emails are going to be out there, yeah. and they all need to be produced. So there's ways to get around it, but it is getting more complex. We're uh, continuing our Boughton Law Legal Series. We're uh, talking with uh, Greg Rafter, who is a civil litigator with Boughton Law, about what happens if your business is being sued. What can you do? What should you do? Uh, When we come back, what is it like to appear in court? And what are some of the options available for dispute resolution, getting things taken care of before you get before a judge? We'll talk all about that coming up next here on the John McComb Show on CKNW News Talk 980. Thank you, Mark. Six degrees outside CKNW at Pacific Center. Coming up to 752 in the John McComb Show. We're talking uh, about what happens if your business is sued uh, with Greg Rafter. He is with the Boughton Law as a civil litigator. So do do most cases end up in court? Do they end up before a judge? Uh, I'm not sure what the official st- statistics are on that. Uh, in my experience, no, most, most will settle. Um, but they do wind up in court from time to time. The courthouse is still a pretty busy place. Yeah, and what's it, what's it like? business owner, you know, is, is, is having to defend himself against a, a claim. Uh, it, it must be a pretty pressure-packed situation. It, it can be. It's, it's more, I think, because of the unfamiliarity of the surroundings than anything else. Uh, you know, it's not an awful lot like what you see on television. It's really a different environment here. Uh, you know, the judge is sitting up high on his bench, and uh, the lawyers are there in their robes. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to wear wigs anymore. That's, but a, the, that's a, an improvement, yes. But the uh, but the uh, there is that the, sort of the trappings that go along with that. The the language and the procedures that we use are unfamiliar to people, and it can the whole environment can be a little bit intimidating. And that's one of the reasons that I say that the process can be uncertain is because you can have the best prepared witness in the world uh, who is may be intimidated by those circumstances mm-hmm. of being in court and just doesn't give the evidence in the way that you thought it was going to come out and things kind of go sideways on you. Uh, bef- before you get into court, there are some some options for dispute uh, resolution. Uh, you mentioned uh, small claims. But what are some of the other uh, places you can go if you don't want to go before a judge? Um, my colleague Wally Opal was in here not too long ago talking about that in detail, but Briefly, uh, the two main uh, uh, options uh, to avoid going to trial would be a mediation or an arbitration. Mm -hmm. A mediation is just where the parties agree between themselves that they're going to get some independent third party to come and sit down with them and see if they can get past the obstacles and hammer out a deal. 
it's uh, going into mediation. Um, no decision is made. No one is. You don't decide who is right and who is wrong in this thing. Right. Uh, you just uh, everyone has has decided that they want to settle, and they're going to use this individual, the mediator, to uh, assist them overcoming any obstacles that there are to uh, getting a settlement. And uh, that's what it's all about. If you're going into a mediation. Um, where you're firm and you're not going to move from your, your original position, then you might as well just not even waste your time. Right. A, uh, a, an arbitrator, again, is, an, is appointed uh, by agreement of the parties, but an arbitrator is someone that you're appointing to be your private judge, essentially, and make a decision and decide who is right and who is wrong. Uh, the, the procedures that are used for presenting evidence and the hearing witnesses and so on is similar to what's used in court, but you can fine tune that to whatever suits um, the parties that are involved in a particular instance. Right. And so are those decisions uh, often challenged? They can be. uh, But again, if the parties have agreed to the process in the first place, in my experience, they're not. But they can be. There's procedures for that. What are the biggest um, mistakes that uh, businesses will make when there's a some, when a suit is launched against them? Um, the first thing is is ignoring it and hoping it'll go away. Yeah, that, um, that never works. No, it? no. As I as I said before, it's uh, <laughs> that that can that can lead to some uh, uh, unintended unintended consequences. If you don't if you don't file a response to a claim that's made against you, judgment can be taken against yeah. you. So you want to avoid that. And the other thing is uh, not uh, being forthright with counsel, with your own lawyer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes there's information that you don't want to tell the lawyer because maybe it's embarrassing or you think it hurts your case or something like that. But the fact of the matter is most of that that bad news is going to show up at some point. And if uh, if it comes up at a time that the lawyer's not expecting it, it it can cause you trouble. So... At least if we know uh, the complete story, the uh, warts and all, uh, then we can, we can deal with all that. Appreciate you coming in this morning. Thank Thanks you. very much, John. Uh, talking with Greg Rafter, civil lit- litigator with Boughton Law, and uh, a reminder that the discussion does not constitute legal advice. And if you want to uh, get more information on this or any other legal matter, you can go to cknw.com slash Law and uh, get all the info there.